Christopher Reeve once said, so many of our dreams at first seem impossible, then they seem improbable, and then when we summon the will, they soon become inevitable. Our next story follows a young man who risked his life to prove those words are true. I just love it. It's amazing. So many wonderful things. It's kind of where God shows off. This is how Matt Johnston envisions the world beneath the sea, a place he's never visited, but has dreamed about all his life. From the time he was four or five years old, drawing fish and talking about them, anything to do with, with uh, sea life and stuff, he always had an interest in it. An unusual passion for a Minnesota boy raised five states from the nearest ocean. But Matt's hopes of exploring the deep crumbled when in grade school, his body began to fail him. He couldn't run or jump like the other kids. He would fall down for no reason. When you heard the doctor say your son has muscular dystrophy, mm -hmm. you knew what it meant. Oh yeah, yeah. I was totally devastated. Um, Matt has uh, Duchenne, which is more common among boys. and. They don't generally live very long. Knowing that must have been hard. Oh, yeah. I mean, how, how can you fit a lifetime in, what, a week, a month, a year? By seven, Matt couldn't take another step. Finally, one day, he looked up at me and said, I can't walk anymore. I'm tired. When he was 17, his respiratory system shut down altogether. Minutes away from losing his life, doctors performed an emergency tracheotomy. He would never breathe on his own again. You want it cold, you sure? Yeah, it's good enough. All right. Over the past decade, Matt has become a prisoner in his own body. Today, yeah. at 29, all he can move are his thumbs. Yeah. You can't open your mouth as wide as you used to. You gotta do smaller bites. His parents are divorced, and he lives with his father, Charlie, who now works from home and is trained to be Matt's primary caregiver. You get up a lot. Yeah. Every night, how many times? Oh, a uh, minimum of four or five times, uh, sometimes every hour on the hour. Just to move him? Just shift his hips, uh, move his elbow slightly. To keep his son breathing, to keep him alive. I thought I went to eat. I thought he was dying a long time ago. How long does someone live? with Duchenne. Well, he usually get about 30. I'm going to be 30 on January 12th this year. Does knowing that death is coming so soon, does it teach you something about living? Tell me you got to live your life the best you can. Enjoy it. It's not going to last that long. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to get you, Matt. Come again. With time running out and little to lose, Matt decided to follow through with his childhood dream. So I'm going to scuba dive. It's like, yeah, I can't you do something simpler like learn to fly a kite or something, you know. Well, it began with a few emails, some phone calls, and soon the Johnson household was dive central. My God, I got two lines and cell phone and fax number, and those numbers were ringing all the time. It's not for us, it's for him. There's so many things you can choose. Why yeah. scuba diving? Yes, I don't like easy. I like, I like breaking the windows. People say you can't do something. I like to prove them wrong. You know? Has anyone with muscular dystrophy in the state you're yeah. in been able to do a scuba dive? No. The first. I think he kind of had to sell me a little bit, so and he did. He did a very good job of selling me on the idea that he could run on a scuba dive. Yeah, that's perfect. With the coach on board, a dive company agreed to build Matt a prototype, a suit that would accommodate all of his breathing tubes. The next challenge, Matt hadn't been in the water for over a decade. I mean, I got the vent that kind of, you know, it kind of made me nervous of water, you know. I took a shower and I freak call. They started small, just learning how to be in the water again. What's that? Good? You could tell he was really nervous. I was a, uh, totally on pins and needles. But we were in the water about less than a minute, and all of a sudden you look over and you could just see it melt right off his face. I guess getting back in the water was like, I believe. 
That was like the first time I feel great in seven years. Wait less. We're good? Okay, we're going to float then. His first open water experience came in a muddy lake, but with that success, and after three years of training, he was ready for his master plan. They would leave Minnesota and head to the Florida Keys to hit the ocean. What you're about to do is very dangerous. Yeah, it's risky. So I was going in the car every day. Yeah, but you don't have to take this risk. No. I guess I have to. I feel like it's a destiny to make it come true, you know? Persistence is his middle name, that's for sure. Matt says he would rather die in a scuba accident than leave this world in some hospital bed. Why don't you say no? It's his life, that's where he wants to, his life to come to a conclusion, is the ocean. I have no right to deny him that. I have a feeling it's gonna be better than I ever dreamed it was. It's gonna be the most amazing trip I've ever been on in my life.